Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Greg Friedman and here I like to read scientific papers together with you. Today's paper is interesting. It's old. It's not very amazing, but it's really well written. So let's dive right into it and I share with you what I mean by well written, at least for me. So the paper is from 2006. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's about drinking water utilities perspective on bromide, bromate, and ozonation. Single author. Thomas is from the Water Quality and Production from Fairfax County Water Authority. Fabulous. So let's take a look. Application of ozone and drinking water. By the way, I could have highlighted this entire paper. I really like it. It's easy to read. It's smooth. Everything is explained. It's just fantastic. I, I enjoy reading works like this. So anyway, back to this. Its application of ozone and drinking water treatment plants in the US is growing because of ozone's multiple benefits. Ozone functions as a powerful oxidizing agent and disinfecting agent. It improves finished water quality by reducing turbidity. It reduces the formation of many blah, 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 blah. It's, ozone is good. Ozonation is good. So what's the problem? However, when bromide ion is present, maybe from geology, from runoff, from seawater intrusion, ozone will convert some of the bromide to bromate, depending on the treatment reaction conditions. Bromate can also be introduced into drinking water as a contaminant in the chlorine used for disinfection. The current maximum contaminant level, MCL, in the USA is 0 0.010 milligrams per liter as of 2006. Not sure what it is today. And a maximum contaminant level goal. So the maximum level is 0 0.01 milligram per liter. And maximum goal is zero because of the possibility that bromate may function as a genotoxic carcinogen. Also, if the MCL is lowered by the Environmental Protection Agency, for example, or local laws, uh, the process cost can raise. So this paper is about the drinking water utilities perspective on this. So the author is from the Fairfax County Water Authority, Fairfax Water. It is the largest water provider in Virginia, supplying 1.3 million people. It's a lot of people for just one water place. And the first utility in the state to utilize ozone in the drinking water treatment process. They're located in northern Virginia, within the metropolitan area of Washington, D.C. So I guess they supply D.C. with water, too. Cool. Our president drinks this water. They supply an average of 137 million gallons per day. Just let that sink in. So when we're talking about developing a novel nanotube or nanowire or some kind of specialized powder for cleaning water, these are the numbers we're dealing with. 137 million gallons per day. It's a lot of water. And of course, a significant issue to Fairfax water relative to ozonation process is the potential to form bromate from bromide inherent in the source waters. Yeah, it could be a problem. So the author describes the Fairfax water treatment process. In the treatment process, coagulant, polymer, caustic soda, and sulfuric acid for pH adjustments are used, and powdered activated carbon can be added in rapid mix basins. Rapid mixing is followed by three levels of tapered flocculation and parallel sedimentation basins. The sedimentation basins are equipped with solid removal devices that transfer settled residuals to appropriate processing facilities. Ozone is added in the ozone contactors prior to filtration through dual media. GAC, again, granular activated carbon and sand. After filtration, chlorine, fluoride, and caustic soda are added in the filter clear wells and main clear wells. Aqueous ammonia and zinc orthophosphate, don't know what that is, are added for final treatment in the high lift pump suction wells. The treatment process is illustrated in figure one. Very fancy figure, but it shows where ozone is inserted. So mix, sedimentation, ozonation, dual media filtration, filter clear well, 
finished water storage. Cool. So we're ozonating before the filters. Nice. Water quality enhancements with ozone. So disinfection byproduct, DBP levels, including trihalomethanes and haloacetic acid, have been significantly reduced due to settled water ozonation followed by GAC filtration, claims the authors from 2002. Looks like in multiple studies, this DBP, the disinfection byproducts, were reduced when ozonation was implemented. So what about this bromide bromate concerns? The presence of bromide in a drinking water source, even at relatively low levels of approximately 100 micrograms per liter, is a cause for concern from a drinking water regulatory compliance perspective, claims another study. As was mentioned in the abstract, of course, ozone can oxidize bromide into bromate within normal water quality treatment parameters. Temperature, I guess, flow rate. As was mentioned earlier, we want bromate to be under 0.01 milligram per liter and preferably zero. The author talks a little bit about the chemistry of ozone. Chemistry is very simple. So ozone reacting with bromine can result in the formation of the guy we don't want. Interestingly, variation of bromide levels have been studied since 1997. Didn't realize that, but they've been tracking it. So from 1997 to 2004, figure two will show us that the bromide levels range from non-detectable levels to 70 parts per billion. Let's take a look. Yep, so we're going from somewhere in the 20s in 2003 to a maximum as high as 70 parts per billion. And in figure three, look at the monthly levels. So let's look at the monthly 1999. We go from 16 January and 16 September, thereabouts to as low as 10 in April. Ha, huh, this is cool. The exact cause of the higher January and September levels could possibly be explained by bromide containing road salt runoff in January and drought conditions in September. Interesting, road salt, drought. Okay, so what about the Fairfax water bromide disinfection byproduct study? So in 1996, Fairfax Water performed a pilot phase to determine the appropriate design criteria. Study engineers conducted a bench scale study and published it in 97 on the impact of bromide concentrations on disinfection byproduct formation. So what they did, they kept pH constant at 6, while bromide concentration in the settled waters tested were 0, 50, 100, 150, and 300 micrograms per liter. These samples were ozonated with transfer doses of 3.2, 4.8, 6.4 milligrams per liter of ozone, I guess. The ozone doses were selected to achieve cryptosporidium inactivation level of 1, 2, and 3 logs, otherwise known as 90%, 99%, and 99.9%. .9%. At pH 6, bromate was only detected at the highest transfer ozone doses of 6.4 mg per liter and the highest bromate spike of 300 mg per liter. Only when they spiked with lots of bromide and used a ton of ozone enough to get you 99.9% .9 kill of cryptosporidium. The bromate concentration was analyzed at 11 micrograms per liter, thus one microgram per liter higher than the current MCL. Thus, the author concludes that maintaining low pH during ozonation and raw water level of bromide significantly lower than 300 micrograms per liter is necessary to keep the MCL low. Makes sense to me. Then you will elevate the pH to the basic side before the water can be distributed to consumers to reduce aggressivity to pipe and plumbing fixtures. Cool. So add some sulfuric acid, and I don't know what they add to bring pH back up. So what about the distribution of bromate in finished waters? It was a study performed by the American Water Works Association's Research Foundation, AWWARF, in 2001. 
In the study, they considered low to moderate bromide waters to be water with bromide concentration under 100 micrograms per liter. And if we recall from the Fairfax water study, their maximum was 300 micrograms per liter. What they did is they studied 24 full-scale ozone plants based on 68 samples from the separate sampling campaigns. The 50th percentile bromate concentration was 1.2 micrograms per liter and a target is to not exceed 10. The average concentration of bromide to bromate was 6.7% in these ozone facilities. Of the 24 full-scale plants, 14 natural waters were studied and they had a median bromide concentration of 42 micrograms per liter. So to get a one log or 90% cryptosporidium inactivation, approximately half of the waters were expected to produce bromate in excess of 10 micrograms per liter in that study. What the authors conclude is, fortunately, bromate concentration in source water for Fairfax water treatment plant remains low and are not now of great concern in complying with 10 micrograms per liter bromate MCL. However, if there is a lower MCL, there will be a problem the facility is prepared to deal with. You know, for me, like I mentioned in the beginning, the paper isn't exactly amazing breakthrough that E equals MC squared. However, for me, a lot of the necessary details are present. The authors make good recommendations for the use of ozonation, when to use it, and there is pretty clear advice of where to do your testing, how to do your testing, there is seasonality to it, and you need to keep the goals in mind, what are you trying to achieve? 90% reduction, 99% reduction, etc. So I use this paper as a reference for myself of what a good, solid, clean and clear paper looks like. I'm going to try to be a better writer myself and I urge you guys to do the same. That is if you write papers. If not, enjoy this video. I hope you had fun. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you didn't, please let me know why. I would love to hear your comments, suggestions, and advice. I value it very much. Thank you and have a great day.